Hello friends and uh, fellow Neo2 addicts. I thought I'd make a little addendum to my build. Uh, I've made a number of changes thanks to somebody in my chat on New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm not going to put up a video for New Year's Day because my stream ended at 2 a.m. So I consider that to be a video. <laughs> I was on for exactly eight hours. So uh, this is going to be the video, first video of the new year. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is thank uh, Seraph Sauce again. He was the one who came in to my stream and suggested a bunch of changes to my build to make the game less frustrating. Uh, obviously, I have a pretty low frustration slash stress threshold due to my mental illness and stuff. So uh, I was looking for a way to keep playing this game and manage my stress levels. So there's a lot to go over here. Um, one thing I would recommend doing is... Remembering the fact that you have 4,000 storehouse slots. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to be junk, uh, especially if you only play with certain amounts of weapons. Uh, I'd say after maybe a couple weeks of grinding, uh, you will have to clean this out. But generally, uh, the things you want to keep are things that have like rarity inheritance, or transform bonuses, or grace inheritance. You always want to keep those because there's always a chance that you'll find the perfect piece for your build, and this is not just applying to the way I'm playing the game with this whole martial artist, key destroyer type build. Uh, just whatever build you want, you definitely want to keep uh, items like this. Uh, everything else, it depends on if you want to keep it. Uh, as you start to get to the final two difficulties, pretty much anything under, I'd say, plus 40 or 50, you're going to want to just get rid of because it's going to take at least five or six, maybe even up to ten soul matches to get it up to your current gear. Like, I have plus 80s on most of my uh, gear components right now, so something like this uh, you could throw out, but either way, you have 4,000 slots, so if you see a piece that even remotely looks like something you would want, especially if it's in the same uh, armor weight class, or it has the right star effects, or it's a weapon that has exactly what you want, you can always use uh, grace inheritance and also rarity inheritance to transfer it. So uh, I recommend being a pack rat in this game. Uh, the only thing you really get for disassembling ethereals is divine fragments, and there's really only one use for those right now, I'd argue, and uh, it's a bit of a stretch. Uh, I'll be getting into that in a few minutes, but uh, generally I benefited a lot from storing pretty much everything in here. Uh, he came into my chat and suggested a bunch of things, and just by sheer coincidence of me being a pack rat in this game, I had almost all of those components already. So uh, that's what, one thing I recommend to you. Uh, if you're in like an expedition or something and you go back to town, uh, I recommend just dumping everything into your storehouse. Uh, that way you'll have more, more uh, character storage space for whatever grinding you're doing. And you can also refer back to these uh, if you get like the perfect piece and you end up with a transform bonus or a grace or, inherit or rarity inheritance. So there were a couple things I changed. Uh, I went for double purity. I'm definitely doing a lot of damage with this. Uh, I spent a long time crafting this weapon, but it was definitely worth it. This is pretty much best in slot, as far as I'm concerned. I've got one more slot for an inheritable, but I haven't really found anything to put there yet. Same thing with the Tonfa as well. The Tonfa is pretty good too. So what I put on my head slot was uh, make sure to have some sort of key damage and then increased attack on winded enemy. Apparently this increases your attack by 20%. Uh, considering this is a key destroyer build, you're pretty much going to have that buff up all the time. So when you add that with having two accessories of whatever respective grace you're using, like for me, uh, or the, for this guide, rather, uh, I have 40% zero key. <laughs> uh, you're definitely going to want that as well. Um, if you can find a piece with Sloth on Ninjutsu or Onmyo, uh, it can be nice. Uh, I don't know which uh, Onmyo magic uh, abilities proc the Sloth. I haven't been able to get a piece with that yet, but uh, you can just use just generic shurikens to proc it. Uh, it will have diminishing returns like all other status effects in this game, so... Uh, you definitely want to use it when you're in a pinch or at the beginning of a fight, because if it's a yokai boss, uh, it can really easily just dominate them, at least if you're playing solo, because uh, ideally you'll deplete their key, they'll go into the yokai realm, and that will lower their, their max key, and you'll just be able to break it over and over and over, like you'll see in the, uh, the final gameplay component of this video. On every other piece, you want to stack... Uh, I would 
recommend active key damage because you have things like uh, heavenly, what's it called? Heavenly chain, you have shove and stuff on the tonfas, which will do a lot of key damage. Uh, just like one high stance square combo into shove will take off a ridiculous amount of key, even on some of the most durable enemies. Uh, melee key damage will kind of just come naturally from your from your Ninigi set, as you can see here. You're going to get 30% from that, and then you're going to be stacking a bunch of it on here, and then you'll have 20% from your Guardian Spirit. So you're looking at about 50 to 55 just from that, and then whatever pieces you have, uh, whatever's on your respective weapons, I definitely recommend going for start melee or active damage. Uh, they both conflict, so you can get one or the other. And then finally, uh, this is actually going to be one of the easiest things to get, believe it or not. Uh, I know this looks pretty damn impressive. I'm not going to lie, it is like best in slot, but... Uh, this is a scroll that's going around a lot in the community because people are starting to realize the power of the Nigi's Grace. Also, it has uh, really awesome rolls. I think it only took me like maybe 10 attempts or so to get everything on here. Uh, I initially had the wrong path to fix on here, but I fixed that later. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have enough uh, points in these three respective stats. Constitution, Courage, and Strength. Courage will give you, you know, the lower key consumption and stuff, which is really great for Tantvas and Fists. Uh, this scroll in particular also has an extra 11% uh, key damage, just as one of the locked affixes. And then Constitution will allow you to heal quite a bit, uh, especially with the other components of the build. Path of the Ravenous uh, greatly makes you greatly recover health when you absorb Amrita. In exchange, your rate of earning Amrita will be decreased, which doesn't really matter. It seems like it's a very marginal uh, disadvantage. It doesn't really affect it that much. Uh, I've definitely noticed I can survive uh, pretty much anything, uh, especially if you use the Honda Clan. Now, if you look at the Honda Clan, uh, this is a very popular one that I was not using. I was using the one for key damage, but... I'm stacking enough key damage now that it doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> so, you want to make sure to go to Honda. Let's see if I can find it here. Make sure to go to Honda because it reduces damage taken by half when you're unscathed, and it'll also give you some active damage as well. What this means is you effectively can't get one shot, and with a combination of elixirs, your rejuvenation talisman, and uh, a bunch of other things like the other affixes I was talking about, and there's a couple more to talk about still, it's going to be really easy for you to maintain a relatively high health. Now there's one other major component, and that is the soul cores. So let's go ahead and check that out. Uh, Gozuki's still pretty much the meta core. Uh, he doesn't do as much key damage as before, but at least for the purpose of this build, uh, it's going to be both your panic button and actually uh, a, a almost full heal for you. I have about 6,000 health and it heals about maybe 50% of it. And when you consider the Amrita absorption and uh, having Rejuvenation Talisman and stuff up, then uh, it will make it even easier for you to maintain that health. So. These other two cores are basically not going to be used for anything but just uh, mitigating the damage you take while you're in the middle of an attack, and then giving you life drain on yokai ability hits. So you're going to want a Gaki core. Uh, one problem is that you'll need at least one of these with uh, an attunement cost minus one. So you need these exact three cores. You need Gosuki, Onryoki, and Gaki. You need Gaki. Pretty much all of them need to be maxed out. Uh, Gaki in particular because it will give you more life drain when you use Gozuki. So you'll be able to use that to stay at the uh, ultimate constitution threshold and also just heal yourself in general when you need a bit of a panic button. Uh, you are, I think it seems like you're invincible for a little bit with Gozuki, but it's kind of inconsistent. So what Onryoki is there to do is that when you have him maxed out, he reduces the damage you take during mid-attack by almost 22%. So when you stack that with all this other stuff, you're actually going to be somewhat of a tank. Uh, you'll still get killed if you're if you're careful, but this is a definitely more uh, easy way to play <laughs> this class, basically, or this build, whatever you want to call it. Uh, on your weapons, you want to temper damage bonus uh, equipment lightness. This will also give you a little bit of extra damage as well. Uh, it is not a star effect, so you will be able to get it if you uh, try hard enough. You might find one that just has it. 
And then on your accessories, what you want is uh, zero key is definitely necessary for whatever your respective grace is. You need at least one set bonus required uh, reduced affix. And then if you can get it, if you can get sloth on magic or into jutsu, that can be nice as well because it basically can allow you to start your assault on that enemy or preferably a boss. You can start it in sloth and have a couple seconds to just lay into their key and do a bunch of damage. Now, if you're looking for something like uh, a Purity Fists, uh, there's actually a really awesome way to do that. So what you want to do is go to the blacksmith, go to Forge. I know none of us have done this in a long time because uh, almost the entirety of the blacksmith got power creeped by the last two difficulties. But uh, say if you want something like Purity, you can take this. Now, what, what's nice about Fists is that there's this one that has innate Purity and it also doesn't require any monster materials to craft, so you can basically make as many of these as you have Divine Fragments, so... What you would want here is you would want uh, active skill key damage. You want active damage because... active key damage because uh, with the fish you're going to be chaining a lot of actives together. Uh, you can also look for melee uh, attack key consumption down. Uh, that might help as well, but generally you're going to want active damage. Now you can get at least one star off a of Divine on Dream of the Neo, so uh, ideally you would just keep doing this until you get something you want. Like, see that one's junk, so that one would not be usable. The chance of getting a star is pretty low, but overall uh, you can definitely brute force it if you have a lot of Divine Fragments. And just from grinding in general, you're going to have a lot of Divine Fragments anyway, especially if you're getting rid of all your Ethereals, because uh, Ethereals will give you two Divine Fragments per Disassemble, versus uh, the one you get from a, a Divine item. I'm trying to get a star here so that I can show you guys, but the game is saying no. <laughs> so there's one with key, con uh, key Consumption down. That one's actually not terrible, but... Be looking for the best of the best here. Let's try this a few more times, see if the game will allow me to demonstrate this properly. Wow, it's uh, it's not being kind right now, is it? <laughs> not a single star. Even though I already have one of these all maximized, I can't even show it for the video right now. Okay, so there's one with a star. So let's say you wanted to take that one. Uh, what you would do is you would add it to your inventory, back out, go to your storehouse, and you go to weapons and sort by grace inheritance. So I gotta find that in here. You can see how much crap I have in my uh, my storehouse because almost every affix in the game is in here. <laughs> Let's see, where is it? It'd be a little hard to find things in here. I think they could do with uh, letting you sort this by like the specific type of thing that you want. Like damage or just a generic set bonus or something. Ah oh, man, where is it? Sorry about this. I was also up until like 4 in the morning last night, so you gotta... Bear with me here. So let's take a Grace Inheritance out of here. I've got one with... Let's take this one, for instance. Let's put this in the item box. So like I said, save all of these regardless of what Grace it is. Uh, in the event that you want to change your build, uh, or you're just using my build, you definitely want to keep these for both weapons and armor, because it will effectively give you another way to mitigate the RNG because you can craft one with at least one star effect that you want, and then you can use Grace Inheritance to level it up to Ethereal. So let's take those items. Let's take that fist that I made. One in here with a star, right here. Take this one, and then take the, the Grace Inheritance. So that will transfer the grace, but you will also need a rarity inheritance. 
So go back in there and search for a rarity inheritance. I'm going to show this whole process so that you guys are, are uh, well aware of how it works. Rarity inheritance is a lot easier to find than grace inheritance. But they're still a little bit hard to come by, so make sure you don't use one that has like a, a really good affix on it or something. So here's one. Let's take this one. Let's take this one and move it to the box. So now we'll go back, make the uh, the base weapon, the one with the star, and then let's take the one that we just got. So that won't inherit the grace, but it will make it ethereal, so theoretically you can craft and just try to brute force the RNG and find at least one star effect that you want. And then when you get that star, you can inherit it uh, both into an ethereal and into a uh, the grace that you want. So let's take that. And there it goes. So now what you want to do is you want to take this and find that rarity inher or, uh, grace inheritance. I can find it. There it is. Uh, you do not need to have the weapons maxed out in familiarity. So don't waste your whetstones on this. Uh, you can just do it as is. I definitely wasted a bunch of whetstones and glue doing this. <laughs> you actually do not need to do that. Uh, as long as the, the items have the right affixes, grace inheritance and rarity inheritance respectively, then you can essentially make uh, an almost optimal weapon uh, with at least one desired star effect uh, just with things that you already have been collecting. So we'll ask you if you want to inherit the grace, make sure you look and that you have the right grace because grace inheritance uh, drops are very hard to come by. So we want to make sure that you don't waste this. Uh, this is just a trash one that I don't care about. But uh, if you're looking for a specific build or, sp or a specific grace, you want to make it absolutely positive. Um, what you can do here is it will also show you on the side what grace it will be. So you want to double check, say yes, say yes again. I'll ask you to confirm that your material item is going to go bye-bye. And there it is. So that was essentially using a smithing text to craft the respective uh, weapon or armor or both that you want. Uh, basically brute forcing it with divine fragments to basically get an almost guaranteed uh, divine forge. And then having looking for the right star effect. And then from there... You can use things that you've been uh, stockpiling in your storehouse to both make it ethereal and have the grace you want. So, uh, smithing texts are still relatively useless. Uh, I mean, realistically, you're going to need uh, hundreds, if not over a thousand, divine fragments to get exactly what you want. I think it took me like about, yeah, it took me about 1,200, I think, divine fragments last night. Uh, you guys can check that segment of my stream if you're bored and you want something to watch. <laughs> Uh, I spent a lot of time in this menu, but I did find one, as you can see here, that has star active damage, which is the highest roll that you can get. So, it actually worked quite well. Uh, I definitely recommend doing that. And then you'll also have an extra two slots, too, so you can use the gray inheritable, and then you can use some orange inheritables uh, if you have them, and basically just make the perfect weapon, and then from there, you can temper. Uh, that's probably the best way to go about this. So uh, I know this is a lot of information to digest, so you might want to watch over this uh, as you do it. And uh, I'll go through here one more time to show you a little bit of a baseline. Like uh, this was a drop. This was not one that I crafted. This was one that just dropped. It had both purity and melee key damage. So for what I'm trying to do, at least with the Nigi and Susano, that's basically best in slot. Whereas the fists, I actually crafted. Hold on a sec. So you want to stack as much melee key damage as possible. Or you can stack a little bit of melee damage, but ideally you want active because the fists are going to be your main damage dealer. So if you can find any pieces with active and melee damage, or melee key damage and melee damage, like this piece here, uh, that will be ideal, but that's kind of gambling for two star effects, so who knows if that will happen. Uh, the rest of the stuff you can temper and work on later. Uh, I definitely have noticed a difference with increased attack on winded enemies, so if you have any of those in your uh, inventory, then I recommend uh, using, what's it called, 
grace inheritance to get the exact grace that you need on the headpiece. Uh, it can only roll on the headpiece. Uh, ideally, I would want active key damage here, but I did not get that yet, so uh, you got to work with what you get. Uh, you can also go for a lucky drop, uh, like I said in my last video about this build, because that will allow you to essentially mean that you're going to be getting uh, almost entirely the exact same weight class as what you're using. Uh, what that will allow you to do is brute force some of the RNG or mitigate it somewhat so that you are uh, at least still getting the same weight class, which means that you won't have to worry too much about grace inheritances, grace inheritance and stuff. And then the Scroll of the Damned, uh, this is going around quite often. Uh, make sure you look at the... Uh, there's two telltale things. The first is that everybody is running this scroll because it's a really good scroll. Uh, the other thing is that the two uh, locked affixes are Ultimate Constitution and Key Damage. And then after a couple rerolls, you'll be able to get all of these uh, exact same affixes. So this will allow you to have three, a whopping three uh, ultimate abilities. You'll have extended iframes, and you'll have Path of the Ravenous, which is going to be helping you to heal. So that concludes the uh, explanation components of this video. Uh, right now, I'm going to cut out to a video of gameplay that I showed of my build that I recorded before this segment. <laughs> We're going back in time to 2020 here. And uh, I hope that helps you guys. So, uh, thanks for watching. If any of you guys need the scroll and you can't find it, uh, you can probably hit me up on Discord, or you can hit me up in the comments, and uh, we can arrange a meeting, or you can just hop into my stream uh, whenever I'm playing this game, and I'll hook you up and I'll try to make sure that the, uh, the scroll rotates around the community. However, a lot of people are running it right now, so uh, if you're on around peak hours, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Okay, so go ahead and watch the gameplay.
All right, I'm doing this in uh, reverse order. <laughs> I'm doing this thing back in 2020. Uh, I actually recorded this segment first, but uh, that is how the build works. Uh, you have a lot of versatility and survivability uh, with this setup. You have the protection talisman. You have rejuvenation. You have uh, shurikens to proc sloth. Or you can use magic to do that as well. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which magic uh, abilities proc the sloth. I was only able to get one with sloth on ninjutsu. But you'll have that. Uh, it will have diminishing returns. So you want to make sure that you don't use it too much. Uh, it will start lasting less and less and it'll be harder to apply it. Uh, but generally you can get at least one good status in there. Which on a big yokai boss like the one I just fought, uh, I can pretty much just secure the match right there. Uh, I didn't land it there at the start, but it will... About two shuriken will, uh, will proc it uh, for a couple seconds at least, so at least during that time with this build, you can theoretically break his key to the point where, like it was in that fight, where I really only had to struggle to break it once, and then after that point, he was just stuck in an endless loop of waking up and then being tired. <laughs> it works quite well. So you have the Lightning Familiar Talisman. Uh, that will also allow you to uh, proc Lightning, which will slow them down as well. So you can use that. You can, you can consider that a second Lightning proc. Uh, you'll also have the Power Pill. You'll also have the Arch Yokai Talisman. I don't know if this conflicts with the Attack on Winded Enemy, but I am going to assume it doesn't. Uh, you know how this game is. It's, it's, it's very clear about some things. It's very obtuse about others in terms of what conflicts and what doesn't, but you could very easily get rid of this and put something else on if you wanted. Uh, you have Impurity Transference, you have the Barrier Talisman, and then you have Soul Purge. Um, this makes you do a ridiculous amount of extra damage as well, so you want to stack this uh, as much as possible if you can. Um, only if you're certain that you're going to be able to beat a boss. Now, with the Fists and Tonfas, it's pretty easy to level up their familiarity. Uh, it only takes, like, a couple kills with uh, versus something with a bunch of health, <laughs> and you'll get it mostly back. Like right here, I almost maxed it out already. And I used it on my last attempt, which I didn't keep because uh, it was not a good attempt. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you have a lot of flexibility with this build. Uh, you have a lot of survivability as well. Uh, Light Armor, the person who suggested a lot of these changes to me, uh, his name was Sarath. Uh, he came into my chat yesterday back during uh, New Year's Eve, and he was talking about how light armor is maximum effort mode. You can make it medium e effort mode with this. <laughs> so uh, it'll be hard to get all the components, but if you can do this, then uh, it'll make the game a lot more fun to play, and you'll still be doing pretty significant damage too. So before I sign off, let me uh, see if I got any good pieces here. Uh, can't say I did. <laughs> These are pretty bad pieces. Alright, well, that's about it. I uh, hope you liked the first part of the guide. Uh, it's going to be hard to find a lot of these pieces of gear the exact way you want them, but uh, there are a couple ways that you can go about that uh, if you want to waste a bunch of your Divine Fragments. Thanks for watching.